Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Rage, and we are back today to start off here, the last and final note here for Dark Dimension 7, and just uh, for the unlock, ultimately, of Mephisto, using the same team that I've been using um, for the past couple of notes. So that's Skrull, Dormammu, Kestrel, as well as Apoc. Uh, and as I noted in my past videos, guys, it's not the best team because Kestrel is kind of a punching bag. She doesn't really do much in the grand scheme. It's really the Super Scroll and Ultimate, excuse me, uh, the Super Scroll and Apocalypse show. And as you can see here, um, I, I, there wasn't much I can do in this initial wave. I, I realized that I actually had to soak up damage in the first attack. So that's why I don't do much. Um, it would be nice if you can just utilize the APOC Ultimate and so forth. But um, my cooldowns weren't exactly great when I wrapped up the previous node. So if you have to, you may have to just do the same thing as me, which is going in for the sack and using these abilities. And that's why I didn't really do much in this first initial attack anyways. And now with the second attack here, we do have a little bit more wiggle room uh, now that some of the enemy ultimates have been utilized against us. Yeah, so uh, even like this, it's not like great with uh, obviously the Nightcrawler using the ult there. But uh, now we can actually cast the offense down with we'll scroll once again. And it's just dealing with some of these uh, these frustrating characters in the beginning wave here, especially like Morgan Le Fay, the Black Cat, obviously um, um, does a lot of control as well. So we're basically just trying to wait for a turn because, like I said, there's a lot of characters that get their turns before us. And finally, we get a chance to use the Apocalypse Ultimate. And this is going to be very, very key because he's he's basically going to be the one that's taking down damage dealers, right? I, I recommend taking down um, Nightcrawler as soon as possible just because he gives the team uh, a speed boost, especially if he can start off with special. So you definitely want to control him. And that's kind of what we did there. You probably won't be able to get through um, the taunt there. So you have to just attack. Uh, and so forth until we actually, um, you know, get a turn and once again. But the good news is it doesn't last too long. No, at this point, yeah, if we finish up Nightcrawler, so he's the first one that goes down. And like I said, from the first sack uh, attempt anyways, it was good that uh, we were able to waste some of these enemies' abilities, which helps out for us. Um, I opted to just stun there, just that way it could buy us a little bit more time. But it's going to be very key. It's, uh, timing your attacks with uh, Apocalypse and Scroll is going to be very, very key. Uh, in this final note, just because of the fact that there's just so many enemies and you have to get through them together. And if you're starting off the sec last section using four characters, that's also already a disadvantage because we're not using the full team, but it is what it is. So this is nice now. I think we've gotten it to a pretty reasonable point in terms of just do allocating damage accordingly. We got some good debuffs there, but there's still some big heavy hitters like Morgan Le Fay that we have to worry about. And that Kang is also... Uh, an issue too if he can get his cooldowns back up to do damage to us right so definitely be mindful of him but it's nice that they're all grouped together like that so scroll can turn me a rewind uh we got dormammu ultimate this is basically the only thing he can do uh for us uh, uh, and then like i said earlier um kestrel is really just a punching bag she doesn't really do much in these nodes unfortunately but um you know the good news is at least uh um, you know, she did have some value in raids with Pegasus until obviously now the Orcus team took over. But it is what it is. In the future, hopefully, maybe there's going to be another rework for her. Uh, I, I don't think she's ever going to lose value in the game because of that love and being an original strike character. But uh, there we go. That cleaned out a lot of the waves. So that only leaves us with these big three now, right? Kang, Morgan Le Fay, Black Cat. This is ideally where you want to be because thankfully uh, there isn't more waves of enemies spawning. Um, you know, so we can actually clean these characters up. So we are just being mindful of cooldowns, but as you can see, uh, my Apocalypse fell. So at this point, I think this is good enough. Honestly, it's, it doesn't look great, but having this as a uh, as a second follow-up attack and, and making sure that these enemies waste their abilities once again, I think is very, very pivotal. And it puts us in a good position now for a very meaningful third attack in now. So yeah, guys, you can see, this is just like a, a slow grind almost, right? And that, that, it is what it is. Like, that's kind of the reality with this last node when you're you know only use utilizing four uh four out of five possible characters right but thankfully now um this is one where i would assume that kestrel is going to survive especially since we're starting off with a a less than full wave which is pretty big for us so now you're basically just left with black cat as the very last member here and um she's pretty easy enough to clean up but just make sure you watch out for her uh her abilities just because she can still cast a lot of bleed so 
you definitely don't want to drop your guard if it looks like she's gonna unleash attack or finish off one of your allies i would uh i would focus on actually um maybe shutting her down or controlling her but in the meantime our hp was pretty healthy we're getting our cooldowns back and also be mindful of the fact that when i started off this third attack i did not use my apocalypse ultimate uh you should be saving it for the next wave just because it's basically the, the start of a, a new wave here right so we go ahead we always like to start things off with the Termi Rewind, add a little bit of exposure there, so that way we're going to do some AoE damage. Um, and this is once again an opportunity for us to use Apocalypse's ultimate. So um, his charge was already utilized at the very beginning, but now we can. Uh, I would highly recommend to aim for one of the two Morgan Le Fays. You just don't want them both to be bouncing off each other, especially since uh, this wave is paired with a uh, couple of Quicksilvers as well. That Scarlet Witch Synergy. So, I mean, it's definitely very, very dangerous. As you can see, that's how quick it is. Um, both our Dormammu and Kestro fell just like that. And now we're basically left with the pieces here. Uh, both Apoc and Skrull uh, needing to kind of really pick up the slack here. But yeah, once again, guys, at least the good news is that one Morgan Le Fay was taken care of. So we took, we, we've cleaned up nine out of the 29 possible enemies in this uh, node so far. Looking pretty good. But like I said, um, I, I would say I would put this with the global section. I would say the two hardest sections in the uh, in Dark Dimension 7 anyways has been Global and as well as obviously um, this last and final note here for Mythic, uh, uh, which makes sense because, you know, obviously the unlock of Mephisto. So there you guys have it. Uh, the first part of my video, I don't want to make it too long, but I'm going to be following this up with a video pretty soon here just to wrap up the rest uh, of the attacks here and ultimately unlock a Mephisto uh, for my channel, guys. So hopefully this is helpful. You can see the three attacks there. And again, that sack I feel like was very, very much needed just to sit, take in that damage and it helped us kind of uh, build up for some uh, follow-up attacks that were very meaningful. Thank you for your time as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.